Hare Krishna. So this is one very two-line bhajan that's, that's repeated once. It's called Adyodhya Vasi Ram, Ram, Ram. It's not a very known bhajan. Lokana Swami sings it many times in his bhajans, but we will try to sing it and try to follow it along. I need your loud participation in this because my voice is not so good, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so if I sound like, you know, like one of the monkeys, then you're correct. So. <laughs> okay, we need a Madunga player who were. Do we have Mr. Mr. M, or is it the big M? Is he here? Mr. Marco? He went to what? He'll come back. Okay. You're sure? <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any other Madunga players here? Dennis is not here. Mm-hmm. Mataji, you can play Murdunga, right? She's, yeah, she's good. It's, it's just a simple bhajan, so it's nothing fancy. <clears throat> you got to sing really loud, <laughs> because I'm deaf. <laughs> Okay, so you ready? Okay. Ayodhya Ba no I sing and then you follow. <laughs> okay. Ayodhya Ba Siram Ram Ram Pati. Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasaratan Nandan Ram Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasaratan Nandan Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohan Ram Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasarat Nandan Ram Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasarat Nandan Ram Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Patati Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram 
Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasaratta Nandana Ram Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Ayodhya Vasi Ram 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 Dasarata Nandana Ram Patita Pavana, Janaki Jeevana, Sita Mohana Ram. Sita Mohana. Patita Pavana, Janaki Jeevana, Sita Mohana Ram. Sita Ram Jaya Sita Ram Sita Ram Jaya Sita Ram Dhatu Bhagavi Raghava Raja Ram Patita Bhavana Sita Ram Bhagupati Raghava Raja Ram Patita Bhavan Sita Ram Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram Sita Ram, Jai Laksman Hanuman Sita Ram Jaya Lakshman Hanuman Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hare Thai Ghar Hare Bhaar Hare Bhaar Hare Bhaar Jai Jai Prabhu Bhaar Prabhu Bhaar Prabhu Bhaar Jai Prabhu Bhaar Jai Jai Prabhu Bhaar Prabhu Bhaar Prabhu Bhaar Jai Prabhu Bhaar Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ji Ki Jai Bring the screen up a little bit so you can see the translation. Go up a little higher. Chant the name of Ram, the Lord of Ayodhya, the son of Dara, Dasarath, and the consort of Sita, and whose name purifies the deprived. Chant the name of Rama, the Lord of Ayodhya, the son of Dasarath, and the, constant, and the consort of Sita, and whose name purifies the deprived. 
That's the translation of that. Ayodhya Vasi Ram. I'm just practicing because I used to be a monkey one time. Now I'm kind of hiding my monkey identity, but but sometimes it comes out. <laughs> Us monkeys, we like banana bread. <laughs> okay, who can make banana bread for the monkey? Okay. No volunteers? Uh, can you make banana bread? No? Okay. Okay, then you'll, we'll have to get rid of you. You're useless. <laughs> okay, we will, anybody can make banana bread? You can make banana bread, okay, all right. So tomorrow we'll have banana bread. Now let's have it tonight. <laughs> okay. okay, for those of you who like monkeys, well, here we are, okay. Sitaram Lakshman Hanumanji Ki So we Jai Si Panchatattva Ki Jai Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Svarupakam Bhakta avatar bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kam. Hmm. So today is the celebration of the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Ramchandra, the manifestation of the highest form of the Narayan incarnations who appeared in this world two million years ago to perform his pastimes of giving pleasures to devotees and teaching the world what is the ideal king. Even today, people talk about Ram Raj. That rule, which is ideal, when they speak about what is ideal ra rule, they think of Ram, Ram the king, the ideal ruler, the ideal husband. Krishna had 16,108 queens. Ram had one wife. <laughs> so he followed the norm of the human society by accepting only Ekapatni, or one wife, like that. He also taught um, righteousness in principle amongst his devotees, and he also taught uh, the importance of living a life uh, following the principles of Dharma to their fullest extent. Is it warm? Oh, us monkeys only like warm water. Okay, yeah. So. And you can put a little banana flavoring in it because we like... <laughs> All right. Okay, so for the last 10 days, I've been speaking Ram Leela every day in here at the temple for the last two days, this is the third day. And so we've covered, I've covered practically the whole Ramayana except the last part of the Ramayana. So I thought since this is the finale of the celebration, we can also uh, bring about that discussion on the demise of Ravana. <laughs> So Ravana was actually Jai and Vijay, one of the gatekeepers that committed an offense to the four Kumaras and was forced to fall to the material world, accepting three births as demons. The Lord likes to fight. <laughs> Prabhupada says, where do you get that propensity to fight? From the Lord, because the Lord likes to fight. Not only does he fight, he enjoys fighting. In fact, he enjoys everything he does. And guess what? The Lord never loses. <laughs> Sometimes we lose. <laughs> Sometimes we win. Uh, 
So this demon, he was the one of the manifestations, the second manifestation. The first one was Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. After that came Ram and, I'm sorry, Ravana and Kubakarna, his brother. And then we had Dantavarka and Shishupal for the last manifestation in Krishna Leela, like that. So the, I'm going to fast forward it to the point where the monkeys have now connected with Ram. Ram knows that his beautiful wife has been captured by the king of the Rakshashas, Ravana. He lives in a place called Lanka, which is 800 miles from the shore of India. At least then, the, ge the geography has changed a little bit, so the land masses have changed in structure. But two million years ago, it was 800 miles away. It's interesting, I, should, I, th I just think I bring this up, that the archaeologists and people who explore the ocean have found the remnants of the bridge that was built by the monkeys two million years ago underneath the sea. This was found about 20 years ago. They called it Adam's Bridge. And even within the last year, I saw some videos given by scientists that they're amazed they found these rocks underneath the ocean that connects Lanka, or now is called Ceylon, to India, and they can't really carbon date their locks because the rocks are so old that their carbon dating machine doesn't go back that far. So they're curious, what are these rocks? But these are the rocks that were thrown by the monkeys, which created a bridge from the shore of India to Lanka that was 800 miles long and 80 miles wide. That's how big this bridge was. And millions and millions of monkeys in assistance to Ram, under the guidance of two powerful monkeys, Hanugra Hanuman and Sugriva, crossed the ocean and attacked the city of Lanka for a big fight. Those of you who like fights, this is the story. So I'll talk a lot about fighting tonight. If anybody wants to fight, uh, just you can take out your propensities by listening to this story. <laughs> so now Ram realizes that Sita is held captive in the Ashoka Grove in Ram's in Ravana's garden. She's been there for more than 10 months. Ravana vowed that if Sita didn't surrender to him voluntarily after one year, he would chop her into pieces and have her for breakfast. <laughs> Rakshashas, they eat human beings. They think human beings are useless. And see, Rakshashas are a superior race of, of living beings. They're very powerful. And they are, there's a planet a few million miles away from the Earth that, and there are Rakshasas living on that planet. It's there. There's many planets you can't see today that exist with, with outside the Earth's orbit that are known by Shastric evidence and not by scientific evidence. Some of these planets are invisible, but they exist. And there's planets of Devas and there are planets of demons that circle the earth, some below the earth and some above the earth. And there's a planet of the Rakshastras. Uh, and they're man-eaters like that. And so when Ravana learned that the monkey army had crossed the ocean, he was amazed. They had built this bridge. They simply floated rocks in the water. Rocks don't float in the water. <laughs> But by the power of Ram, Ram was writing his name on the rocks. And by the name of Ram on the rock, they were it was floating. So it says you can float across the ocean of material existence by chanting the names of the Lord. Jai Shisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. So we have... Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none different than Sri Ram, 
and we have Sri Nityananda Ram, who is none different than Lakshman, holding their bows and arrows along with their quivers. Mm -hmm. Beautiful uh, glorification of the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the monkeys are lined up for battle and the demons get ready to defend the city. And so Ravana sends armies to the four gates, the northern gate, the eastern gate, the western gate. And a big battle ensues. And the fight is described in detail. Ravana underestimated the power of, of Ram and the monkeys, and he thought they were, because the Rakshasas are a superior race, so for them, monkeys and human beings are just insignificant. But he didn't know that that same human being was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who had come as a form of a human being. Ram, I'm sorry, Ravana was the personification of lust. Each of the six manifestations of the demons who appeared in those to fight with the Lord represented a particular bad quality that is there within the human society. Aranyaksha represented greed. Aranyakashipu represented pride. Ravana represented lust. Kubakana represented illusion. Dantravarka represented anger. Shishupal represented envy. The six we call enemies of the conditioned soul, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy, which are, are always harassing the living entity. Unless we get rid of these six qualities, we cannot perform devotional service properly. So these six Gwanal, Ravana was a personification of lust. He had so many qualified, beautiful queens. And the best of all of his queens was Mandodari. Mandodari is glorified as a chaste and faithful wife of this big, powerful Rakshasha, Ravana. And she was all good qualities, beautiful. Everything that a woman has in, has as an ideal qualities. And Ravana had so many wives, but still not satisfied. <laughs> this is the quality of lust. Lust can never be satisfied. Lust is described in the Bhagavad Gita as a blazing fire. <laughs> and if you want to put out a fire, you don't put another log on the fire. So to feed lust means to increase lust. Sometimes people think, well, I feel so lusty, I have to satisfy my lusty desires somehow. So someone makes an attempt to satisfy it, and they do something, and the lust goes away for a little while. But then it returns, and each time you feed lust, it becomes, when it comes back, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. The way not to, f to feed lust is to ignore it and use that same propensity to serve the Lord in devotion. And then gradually lust transforms into love, which is the principle of, our, of, the, of the, lo the living entity's happiness. But lust, lust comes in the form of wanting material things or wanting to enjoy material life in the form of exploiting others or trying to get more and more money, pay, fame, power, position, prestige, something. Something that makes you feel important in this world or makes you think that you are happy. Ravana had it all. He had a city that was made out of gold. <laughs> the whole city, the palaces, the buildings, everything around was made out of pure, solid gold. Ravana had gotten many of his gold from a, 
from Prabhupada says, there was a tunnel dug underneath the earth connecting Lanka with Brazil, the place that now we know as Brazil in the world today, which is in South America. And there was a tunnel dug between those two countries. And Ravana's brother was living in Brazil, and he was transporting huge quantities of gold out of Brazil to uh, Lanka. And Ravana was building his city, and he made a beautiful city out of gold. He had more than 10 million followers. That's a small number. It was even more than that. He had loyalty. He had power. He had prestige. He had so many queens. He was... He also knew the Vedas, but he followed the Vedas in his own way. He had everything material that anybody could have, but one thing he didn't have wasn't satisfied. <laughs> so this indicates that material things can never satisfy you. The more you have materially, the more you want. And you see, today, people who live in the world today who are materially powerful. They always want to get more, 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 more. More is better. But a devotee knows that happiness and satisfaction come within the heart. And when the heart is connected to God, to Krishna, then whether you have a lot or you have a little, you're happy. You're satisfied. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are or what you have or what you don't have, you're happy. Because the nature of the soul's happiness is his connection with the Supreme Lord. But the materialists don't know that, so they're trying to find happiness and satisfaction with acquiring more and more things and exploiting more and more people. So now Ravana is faced with a battle, millions of monkey armies. Now Ravana's soldiers are equipped with Axes, swords, shields, various types of scimitars, clubs, discs. They have a lot of the, all of the modern weapons that were available at that time. The monkey army didn't have anything. They were fighting with rocks, trees, and pieces of the mountain. They were using them to throw at the demons. <laughs> But the monkeys were strong, so they could pick up trees and use them for beating the rakshasas. So a big battle ensues. And as is described, the battle was so fierce. And they were just fighting, like, sometimes the monkeys would jump onto the soldiers of Ravana's army and kick them and punch them and bite them and hit them with a rock. <laughs> And the soldiers were trying to fight with their weapons. It was a, and then gradually the monkey army was destroying some of the soldiers so badly that they had to retreat, go back into the city. So each time Ravana was hearing the reports, what was going on in the battlefield. And each time he would send more of his more important generals who were leading. He had sons, he had, he had, uh, cousins, and he had others, brothers, who were his generals, and they were leading the armies. But he would send them out, and, and they would get destroyed by the monkey soldiers. And Rob and Lakshman were also there. But they weren't fighting so much. They were supporting the monkeys in the battle. Finally, after just being defeated so many times, um, Ravana thought, what is happening? These mere mortals supported by these monkeys are defeating our powerful Rakshasha army, which is indefeatable. Some of our generals have defeated the demigods themselves in battle. And now we're being defeated by these insignificant creatures. So he was bewildered. Where do they get their power from? They didn't know that they got their power from God directly. So he kept sending out more of his brothers, generals, relatives, and they were all coming back. They weren't coming back. <laughs> as soon as the generals would be killed on the battlefield, the rest of the army would run back to Lanka. 
So this was happening. And millions of, millions of soldiers were being killed on both sides, the monkeys. It says the battlefield was strewn with bodies, that the blood from the bodies was so deep that they couldn't even fight. They were stepping on dead bodies, trying to wade through the blood. It was such a massive mess of carnage just strewn all over the... If you just... Jai, we have a, a Ram Bhakti there. Thank you very much. He's smiling very happily. Those of you who don't, don't like this, that means you're not Ram Bhaktas anyway. <laughs> Devotees love when the demons are killed. <laughs> it just gives us so much happiness. <laughs> okay, so... Of course, we don't kill demons, but we like when God does. <laughs> Now this fight is going on. It's it's an amazing. You can if you read the pastime, you'll see the details of how the fight is going on. It's just tremendous. The battle, page after page. Today I read, I read 80 pages of the fight. I was just reading page after page of the fight. It was just fighting, fighting, fighting every page, and Ravana's armies were being defeated one after another. Finally, Ravana is thinking, I have to use some of my more powerful generals. So there was one brother of Ravana, his name was Kubukarna. Kubukarna was really, really a powerful personality. He was so big and so huge that if he stood in the city of Lanka, which had very high walls, he would tower above the city. He was the brother of Ravana. He also got a benediction from Lord Brahma, because we also understand that Bra Ravana got a benediction. Ravana's benediction was that he wouldn't be killed by demigods or demons or any. The only thing is, when he heard, should he take a benediction to not be killed by human beings? He said, human beings, they're useless. <laughs> They'll never do anything to me. So he didn't, he didn't even want to be, he said, I don't even want to be embarrassed by this benediction. So he didn't take it. That's why God came as a human being. <laughs> and so this, his brother was also, he was harassing the whole world. And so when the time that came for him to receive a benediction from Lord Brahma, the demigods came to Brahma and said, Brahma, you can't give this man a benediction, this Rakshasa. He's already fierce. If he gets more power, power, he's going to destroy everything. So Brahma thought, what can I do? So then Saraswati, she was hearing, Brahma's wife, she came to Brahma and she said, when he asks for the benediction, I'll speak on his behalf and he won't even know it's me. And I'll speak the words he asks. Okay, so Ravana got his benediction, Vibhishan got his, Supanarka got hers, and now Kupakarna is going to get his benediction. And when he came up and he said to Brahma, I want to sleep. <laughs> Lakshmi appeared on his tongue and said the word sleep, and then Brahma said, Tatastu, so be it. <laughs> Gave him the benediction. And so Ravana said, you can't do that. You can't make him sleep. <laughs> it's not fair. So Brahma said, all right. He can sleep 364 days a year, but one day he can come out, get, come out and eat and then do whatever he does for one day. That's all. <laughs> so that was a compromise. So Kubakana was sleeping, and Ravana needed him for the battle. So he told his generals, and his soldiers, go wake him up. Of course, it wasn't the time for him to wake up, and so they decided to wake him up. So they came and they blew trumpets and beat drums and sounded horns and made all kinds of sounds, but he didn't even move. He was completely asleep. He was fast asleep. Sometimes brahmacharis are like that. They get so fast asleep you can't wake them up anyway. Anyway, that's my experience being in the Brahmachari ashram. <laughs> so anyway, that's another story. 
Ladies, you wouldn't understand that one, because you're not brahmacharis. But anyway, take my word for it. <laughs> so, he's, uh, so they tried that. And then they, they started to take their clubs and, and weapons and start beating his body. Still, he wouldn't wake up. <laughs> then they decided to get some food for him. So they got some big dead meat and put it to put med, meat next to him because Rakshashas like to eat meat and big buckets of blood and big big containers of in various toxicating substances and then they took their chariots horses and their other animals and start running over the body of Kubukarna and finally he moved a little bit <laughs> He woke up a little bit, and finally he came awake, and he saw all the good food that was there, Prashad. He gobbled down all the food, the meat, the meat, the blood, and he got intoxicated slightly. And then he came, and then he woke up, and then Ravana called for him. And he came to see his brother Ravana, and Ravana had told him the situation. Kupanakarna was interesting. He said, my dear brother, you know, you were warned. You're a fool. You stole this other person's wife, and now you have to pay the price. You've been given good counsel by your wives, by your brother Vibhishan. I even told you it wasn't a good idea. But you didn't listen to anyone. Now you're in trouble. <laughs> when you get advice, sometimes there's three kinds of leaders, or three, there's three kinds of leaders. Those who take advice from the advisors, those who ask advice from the advisors, advisors, and then if they like the advice, they take it, and if they don't, they don't take it. And then there's those who don't ask anybody and just do whatever they want, three kinds of leaders. So the best is that you have advisors, the Kshatriyas are the, the leaders, the Brahmins are the advisors, you take Brahminical counsel, and that's how you lead, through the Brahmins' knowledge. But Ravana was the second one. He would ask for advice. But if he didn't like it, he wouldn't take it. If he liked it, he took it. But then there's other leaders who are like Hirani Kashipu. He never asked advice from anybody. <laughs> he just did whatever he wanted to do. So sometimes you see, even in today's world, you have these kind of different kinds of leaders. So um, he was chastised by Kubukarn. But Kubukarn said, because I'm your dear brother and you are the king, I will do whatever you want. Do you want me to enter into the fight? So be it. I will destroy the whole monkey army. <laughs> so he came out of the city, and when he, he, he appeared in public, the monkeys, they saw this monster. I mean, he was huge. He was big. He was a hundred bow lengths. If you take a bow and you measure it a hundred times up, that's how tall he was. No, I'm sorry. He was a thousand bow lengths up, and he was a hundred wide. Yeah, that's how big he was. He was a huge monster. When uh, the monkeys saw that, they turned around and ran. <laughs> and the chiefs of the monkeys, Angada and uh, Sugriva, they, they tried to rally the monkeys. Come on, come on, we have to fight. You know, don't be cowards. Don't you look like your ordinary monkeys. We're soldiers. We're, we're empowered by Ram. Don't be afraid. The monkeys didn't want to hear anything. <laughs> they just ran. And then Ram said to Vibhishan, because Vibhishan had diverted to Ram, he said, who is that? He said, that's my brother, Kubakarna. And uh, so Ram was looking at him. And then the monkeys were supposed to fight with him, but the monkeys didn't want to fight. Finally, Sugriva and Hanuman got everyone fired up, and so the monkeys turned around and started fighting. But, you know, this is like... 
There was no match, you know. This, this, uh, Kuba Kana was just scooping up the monkeys with one hand. <laughs> He's just eating monkey prashad and <laughs> stuffing it in his mouth. And the monkeys were crawling all over his body and beating him. He was just pushing him off like they didn't eat, like they were little insects or something. So he was so powerful. And then they were just punching him and beating him and throwing rocks and they would throw trees and hit him. The trees would split and break. The rocks would fall into pieces just by hitting his body. He was so huge and so powerful. And then this fight went on, and he was just destroying the monkeys like crazy. Finally, the monkeys ran again, and Sugre was like, come on, we have to fight against this. It's glorious if you die in a fight against the, these demons. So the fight was going on. Finally, Kuba Connor, he wanted to get to Ram. <laughs> so he, uh, Lakshman jumped into the fight and started fighting against him. And he said, Lakshman, you're just a boy. <laughs> you can't fight with me. <laughs> so, you know, just go home. <laughs> I want to fight with Ram. So then uh, he pushed his way through Lakshman. Lakshman gave way to Ram. And then there was a big battle between Ram and Kupakarna. Kupakarna was huge. He was throwing all kinds of weapons. He had this powerful, they call it a pike. It was an iron bar that was huge, and he was just smashing everybody with this huge iron bar. When he came to Ram, and it was a big fight, finally Ram you know, was playing with him, shooting different arrows. But his arrows weren't doing anything. They were just bouncing off the demon, <laughs> like they were just like rubber darts or something. <laughs> and so finally Ram said to Vibhishan, what am I going to do? I can't kill this monster. Vibhishan said, you have to invoke the, the weapons given to you by Lord Brahma himself and chant the mantras. So Ram remembered the mantras and chanted the, some of these powerful weapons that was in the arsenal of Lord Brahma himself. And these mantras, he produced these very powerful arrows. And then he shot one arrow and it hit the arm of, of, uh, of Kubakarna and knocked his arm off his body. And his arm lay there on the ground with his club holding it. And then he, still Kubakarna was coming at Ram with, with his weapons. And Ram kept firing arrows, firing arrows. Finally, the Lord fired a second arrow and cut off his second arm. And now, although he has armless, he was still charging at Ram, trying to gobble him up, chew him up. And Ram just fired another one. And this one was the powerful arrow. It cut off the head of Kubakarna, and his head was so big that it rolled and hit the, the northern gate of the Lanka fortress and destroyed the gate <laughs> and killed so many Rakshasas and monkeys when his head fell. His head was huge. <laughs> so Kubakarna was killed. Now Ravana got the word, oh my God, how is it possible Kubakarna could be killed? So now he's thinking, so he sends out some more of his generals and they come back. They don't come back. <laughs> so the fight goes on. If you have to read this fight, it's just incredible. It's the way it's described in details, how they were firing weapons at each other, throwing rocks, beating each other. This so was just like page after page of war, that's all it is. If anybody made a movie out of it, I don't think you can make a movie out of this. It would be too scary. <laughs> it was just really heavy. So finally, Hare Krishna, welcome. Uh, uh, Ravana decided, I'll have to send my brother Indrajit. Now Indrajit was, no, his, his son, his son is Indrajit. Indrajit got the name Indrajit. Indrajit means one who conquers, who conquered Indra. He was so powerful, he defeated Indra in battle. And he, and he had an arsenal of many, many powerful weapons. 
So Indrajit comes out on a battlefield, he gets on his chariot, he's surrounded by millions of Rakshasha armies, and they're charging into the monkey armies. A big battle ensues, and the different armor, different monkeys are fighting against uh, Indrajit, but Indrajit is not to be defeated. Finally, Lakshman gets into the battle and starts fighting with Indrajit. Indrajit, he is a sorcerer, he's a mystic. He has the power to transform his form into anything. So he becomes invisible and flies high in the sky and no one can see where he is. And he's firing weapons from an unknown place. All the, the monkey soldiers could only see the weapons coming. They could not see where Indrajit was. So they started firing their weapons in the direction of where the weapons were coming. So the battle was going on. Finally, uh, Indrajit decides to cheat. So he takes out his very powerful uh, Sarpa weapon. And this is an arrow that has, a sna that has snakes attached to it. He fires the arrow at Ram and Lakshman. And when it comes to them, it opens up in the form of these big, gigantic snakes, and they wrap around the body of Lakshman and Hanuman, I mean, Lakshman and Ram, and they tie them up, and they're laying on the ground, defeated. Indrajit thinks, I've won the war. So he comes back and tells his brother, I've killed Lakshman and Ram. He's so happy, celebration. But then, um, the monkeys, they come, and along with Bivishan, and uh, B they bring the Kaviraj, and he, he knows uh, there is some mantras for releasing the snake weapons. So this mantra was known by Jambavan. Jambavan was the king of the bears, and he was fighting with the bear army on the side of the monkeys against Ravana. So he tells the mantras, and by these mantras, these snakes left their grip of Hanuma, um, uh, Ram and Lakshman. So now they're back. And now the fighting ensues. And then Ravana gets the word that Ram and Lakshman are still alive. So then Indrajit comes out again and starts fighting with them. This time he brings his very powerful javelin. You know what a javelin is? It's a spear that's long and you throw it. So he took that javelin and he threw it, and it was powered by mystic energy, and it hit the chest of Lakshman and knocked him down unconscious. It seemed like Lakshman was no longer alive. The battle, feared, the battle stopped. Ram, Ram runs over to Lakshman to see and realizes that maybe his brother is no longer there. Ram is breaking down in emotions. Finally, uh, Bibishan comes and says, no, actually, he's still alive, but still he needs some medicine. So Jambavan says, actually, the only one who can save him is Hanuman. Because in the, in the Himalaya mountains, there's a mountain there that has four types of special herb, herbs. One is called Sanjeevani Karini. And those herbs... Each of the herbs can do a different thing. One can heal broken bones. The other one can completely heal any wounds on the body. And the other one can bring a dead body back to life. These herbs exist. It's just not like some mystical thing. Those herbs exist. And San Sanjeevan Ikarini can bring a dead body back to life. <laughs> so Hanuman was supposed to go. So he jumps into the air and uh, Jambavan tells him where to go. He goes to the Himalayan mountains. He's looking. He finally finds the mountain where the herbs are on. He jumps onto the mountain. But when he comes onto the Hanuman is huge. As soon as he jumped onto the mountain, all the herbs became scared, and they, they hid within the soil. So he couldn't find the herbs. He was looking all over for the herbs, but the herbs didn't come out. So he, what did he, he didn't know what to do. Then he decided, I'm just going to take the whole mountain. <laughs> so Hanuman picks up the whole mountain and carries the whole mountain back to Lanka. And you can see, that's one of the famous pictures of 
Hanuman carrying this mountain. Now, that, I can tell you a personal story. When I was in a place in India called Satara, you know where Satara is? Satara? It's in Maharashtra? Yeah, Satara. Satara means seven hills, right? There's seven hills there, and one of the hills is when, when Hanuman was flying over that area, the top of the mountain he was carrying broke and fell and landed in that area. And that became one of the seven hills of Satara, which is there today. And when I was there, I was talking to the devotees, and the devotees were telling me that the Kavirajas, the doctors, if they need medicine, they go to that mountain and they extract herbs from that mountain. It's a very special mountain. It's still there today. So then Hanuman comes back with the mountain, and then Shushena, he's the Kaviraj, the doctor there, he finds the herbs, and he administers the herbs, transforms it into medicines, and he heals the body of Lakshman. And Lakshman is back, Ram is happy, all the monkeys are celebrating. And then... Uh, Bibishan says, uh, Interjit, he's going to get more power. He's very powerful. He's a mystic. And he's about to perform a sacrifice. If he completes this sacrifice, you will not be able to kill him. He will be invincible. No one can kill him. You must catch him before he completes the sacrifice. So then Ram, Lakshman, and the monkeys jump into action and they start charging the city of uh, Lanka. The, uh, uh, Indrajit, he's alerted of what's happening and he stops in the middle of the sacrifice to come out and fight again. And there's a big fight between uh, Ram and Indrajit. I think it was Lakshman, actually it was Lakshman and Indrajit. And as the fight goes on, they're fighting back and forth. Finally, Lakshman shoots an arrow and he severs the head of Indrajit and kills him. And immediately all the other soldiers, they ran back for... Because as soon as the general is killed, all the other soldiers, they retreat. So they came back. Your brother, I mean your son Indrajit was killed. This time Ravana, he's like... He's, he's mortified. He doesn't know what to do. He's angry. And at the same time, he's lamenting the loss of his family members. He has four sons left. He sends these four sons who are also very powerful, John. One was called Mahodara. The other one's called Atikaya, Mahapakshwa, and one more for these generals. And they came out. They were invincible. And they fought, and they got killed. And Ravana is even more mortified. Then the two sons of, of uh, Kumbhakarna, whose name was Kumba and Nikumba, they came out to fight. And they were just as powerful as their father. And again, eventually, they were destroyed. So the fighting was going on. The... the the uh, Rakshasa army was being reduced fast. They had millions and millions of soldiers. Now they were left with only a, maybe a couple hundred thousand soldiers and Ravana. Now Ravana thinks, I'm going to go into the battle, <laughs> the last resort. But before he does that, he's saying, this is, all this is the fault of Sita. She's still captured in the Ahsoka Grove. So he decides he's going to kill Sita. Takes out his sword and starts heading for the Ashoka Grove. He's angry and he's about to kill Sita. He comes in the vicinity where Sita is. Sita sees him and she's trembling in fear. She gets very scared. She remembers Ram. And then one of uh, the ministers under the care of Ravana Step, steps in between Sita and Ravana just before he's about to kill her. And he said, my dear king, this is not good policy. She's a defenseless, 
her woman. She's a queen. If you kill her, you will have no reputation left. You will be criticized, you'll be vilified, even by your own race. No one will appreciate. And you will only bring about condemnation unto yourself. This, and what good would it do simply by killing this woman? Simply try to kill Ravana and then this woman will be yours. So Ravana's listening. This time he takes the counsel. <laughs> he was smart. So he decides not to kill Sita. And now he jumps on his chariot surrounded by the rest of the about three or four hundred thousand soldiers and he's ready for battle and he comes out. Now Ravana comes out himself into the fight and the fight between Ravana and the monkeys were trying to, I mean, Angara, Sugriva, Hanuman, nobody was a match for Ravana. Nobody was a match for Ravana. Ravana was so powerful. And he could, fire, he could fire arrows the speed of the mind. He's so fast. And he had an invincible, uh, what we say, arsenal of so many different weapons. And he's fighting, he's destroying. But he wants to fight with Ram. Lakshman jumps in, but he says, move aside. You, you are simply a boy. I'm going to fight with Ram. So finally he meets Ram, and Ram is angry. He hears the chance. He, and he came all the way just to defeat this Rakshasha. Now the, the opportunity comes. And so there's a, I mean, amazing fight. Amazing fight. The weapons are flying through the air, and the description of the different weapons and the speed of the weapons, how expert they were at fighting. When one weapon came, another person, the other person would fire an, a weapon at that weapon and nullify that weapon, then father fire their weapon at the enemy, and back and forth they were destroying each other's weapons with their own weapons. It was just an amazing battle. And uh, this is going on. Finally, Ram, he, he realizes, I can't kill this demon. He's so powerful. Bibhishan says, you know, you have to again chant these mantras to Lord Brahma and get his powerful weapons. Otherwise, he's invincible. Then Ram starts chanting, but he's firing the weapons. Now he's cutting off the heads of Ram. Ram has, Ravana has ten heads. He's called Dasagriva. He has ten heads. So he's cutting off all the heads of Ravana. But every time he cuts off the head, the head grows back. Every ten heads down, ten more come. Ten heads down, ten more come. And then he turns to Vibhishan. Vibhishan says he has an immortal pool of nectar in his heart. And as long as that pool is there, you can't kill him. His heads will come back. So you have to destroy that pool of nectar. So... Augusta Muni appears to Ram and says, Ram, do you remember that mantra I gave you and that arrow? Now is the time to use that arrow. Ram remembers the mantra and the arrow given. He chants the mantra and the arrow appears in his quiver. Powerful arrow. This arrow was like a Brahmaster weapon. Yeah. And the fight is going on, so finally he puts that arrow to his bow. And when he pulled it back, just pulling it back, the whole ground shook. Demons, monkeys were falling down just by him pulling that, rod, that weapon back, so powerful. And then he took aim and he went... <laughs> And he, yeah, that's right, you got it. <laughs> he shot that arrow and went speeding. Ram didn't even see the arrow. I mean, Ravana didn't even see the arrow. It was so fast. And it entered into the heart of Ravana, went through his heart, came out the other side, soaked in blood, and entered into the earth. 
and he was dead. Ribo. <laughs> Jai Sri Ram. <laughs> And then when the, all the Rakshasas saw that Ravana was dead, there was no need to fight anymore. Everybody stopped the fight. And then the queens of Ravana came out and they were just lamenting the loss of their husband. And Mandodari, she was the main one, she came out. She's crying. She said, I told you, you stupid husband. Something like that. <laughs> you know, why, why did you chase after... An, another man's wife. This is one of the greatest sins that one can commit, to try to steal another, the wife of another man. This goes on today in society like it's a regular thing. But if one forcibly does that, or captures another wife, that sin is, where, is, is required death. If, you, if a, you kill that person, there's no sin attached to you killing that person. Of course, we can't do that because the laws don't allow it. But in the Bhagavad Gita, it says that in the first chapter, if someone cat, cat, kidnaps your wife, you can kill them, and there's no sin attached to that. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, that's not a hand raise. Okay. <clears throat> so, and then she's just wailing and lamenting, and finally... Ram felt, you know, that you know this was a wonderful fight, and he understood that his this was his devotee who came to fight with him. So Ram arranged for the for the uh, funeral, and uh, they decorated Ra Ravana up with nice clothes and put garlands on him, and took his body down to the river and offered oblations, and then brought his body onto the fire, and then they burned his body in ashes. So Ram personally conducted that, and then he installed Vibhishan on the throne of the Rakshasas to be the new king of the Rakshasas. And the Rakshasas were happy, whoever was left. And then Ram turned to Hanuman, he said, Hanuman, go to the Ashoka Grove and tell Sita everything, that I have come, Ravana has killed, she should come back. Sita wasn't aware of what had happened. So Hanuman came, and very humbly he approached Sita, and he told her, Ravana has been killed, Ram is here, Bibishan is now the new king, Ram wants to meet you, come. She's crying in tears of happiness, Ram has come. After almost a year of exile, she's been under the care of these Rakshashas, suffering tremendously, all praying for Ram to come. Finally, it happened. And now, um, Hanuman turns to the Rakshashis, these female Rakshashas who were there that were harassing and guarding Sita. And he said, I'm going to finish these Rakshashis because they treated you so badly. Sita said, no. They were simply acting under the order of Ravana. Please don't cause them any harm. They are not punishable. We understand that saintly persons don't take revenge. Saintly persons can forgive the transgressors. So please don't do anything. Hanuman listens to Sita. He bows his head in front of Sita with his hands folded in prayer. Sita starts to glorify Hanuman for all the wonderful deeds he performed. She, she has some of her own personal jewelry left. She gives her him a golden necklace, a pearl necklace, and so many other gifts. She thanks, and then Hanuman says, Now ready yourself to meet Ram. She wants to come the way he is, but but Ram told Hanuman no. She should she should take bath first, and become very uh, nicely dressed with so many ornaments and jewelry and perfumes, and then she can come. Now something happened. Everybody noticed it, but nobody was understanding what was happening. Ram was in a very grave mood. It looked like he was angry. 
he was supposed to be happy at the time, but it didn't appear. He was looking like he was not happy, very silent. Finally, Sita appears in front of Ra Ram and everybody else. Ram is thinking, if I accept her back, what will people think of me? She's been with another man for a year, and therefore everyone will say that she is unchaste. If I accept her back, my reputation as a husband, as a king, as a righteous person will be destroyed. I cannot accept her back. So now first he called her, and when she came, he looked, he said, you have been with another man for over a year. You are no longer suitable to be my wife. So I think you should go wherever you want to go, but you cannot come back with me. Whew. Her happiness turned into confusion, bewilderment, anguish. She didn't know what to think. She started to speak. I have never left your association for that one year. I was always praying to you, thinking of you. Although that Rakshasha came and captured me, I never even in the slightest way thought of him in any way. I completely ignored him, always, completely. But Ram didn't want to hear it, or her explanations. She said, all right, if I cannot live with you, then I will not live without you also. So she turned to Lakshman and some of the other, she said, build a funeral pile and I will enter into the fire. Lakshman, when he heard that, he turned to Ram. Ram was completely silent, like he didn't even care. And then they, Lakshman reluctantly, along with others, they got some logs and they built this fire. Sita offered her obeisances to her wonderful husband with folded hands and prayer. She turned around and offered obeisances to all the directions and then she walked into the fire. As soon as she walked into the fire, she disappeared. Everyone who saw that was shocked. They yelled out, oh, it was like the worst thing that could possibly happen. Sita entering into the fire. And everyone was feeling so devastated, unhappy. Finally, after a few moments, the fire died down. And Agni, the fire god, he's coming out with Mother Sita with him. She was, Agni said, she is pure, she is perfect. She was never, even for even one iodia of a moment, fraction of a section, did she ever leave her chastity to you. She is pure, here is your wife. Ram was so happy, he accepted Sita back. And then that was the test that he put her through. She was being tested all the time. She was in the forest for 13 years, harassed by so many difficulties. But because she was with Ram, she was happy. She was in almost a year under Ravana's care. She was miserable, waiting for Ram to come. Finally he came, he brought her back. And then she had to prove herself again. Sita went through a little difficult. But she understood that, that this is the duty of a chaste wife, to follow their husband and follow the instructions of the husband. Nowadays, that doesn't work. <laughs> we have a new society. The men are not qualified to lead the women and the women are not qualified, don't want to follow the husbands. <laughs> the women can't find husbands because there's nobody qualified. And the and the once they become married, the women don't want to follow the husbands, and the husbands get upset. So it's a mess, you know. 
That's why no women don't want to get married today. They don't. They're afraid. What kind of husband am I going to get? Some kind of, you know. Yeah, right. You want to speak a little bit? No. <laughs> you could give class now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's like that. I mean, I meet ladies, they always come up to me and I say, oh, how old are you? I'm 36, you married? No, I can't find a husband. I said, there's so many available. No, there's nobody available. <laughs> so the a woman is looking for three things. She's looking for affection, protection, and material comforts. That's what she looks for in a husband. A husband that can provide something for her, material. She wants affection and she wants protection. These are the three things that women look for. It doesn't matter what the guy looks like. He could be even a little ugly. She'll take him if he's got these three th qualities. <laughs> now, a man, when he's looking for a wife, what does he look for? He wants the goddess of fortune coming from the heavenly planets, flying on an airplane, dressed in beautiful garments, smiling so sweetly. He's, that's his idea of a wife. <laughs> so, so this is what goes on in today's world. The man is looking for the, you know, the, the heavenly goddess for his wife, and the wife is looking for these three things in her husband. So, yeah, this is human psychology. If you don't believe me, stick around, you'll see. <laughs> this is a lesson in uh, marriage counseling. <laughs> so anyway, but, you know, somehow, even if it's not perfect, get married. <laughs> right? You know, you make the best of it, right? Somehow you work it out. <laughs> If you're Krishna conscious, you can work it out. If you're not Krishna conscious, nothing works. <laughs> That's the difference. So now Sita is back and then they all... Now, of course, I told this last night, but I'll mention it again. Bart ruled the kingdom from a distance in a place called Nandigram as the representative of Ram. But he never took the throne and always felt himself simply subordinate to Ram, worship, uh, worshiping Ram and acting on Ram's behalf for those 14 years. When they were on their way back, Ram said to Hanuman, go. Go and go ahead and go to Ayodhya and find Bart and tell him Ram is returning and watch how he reacts. If he shows any sign of being unhappy because I'm coming back, I'm not coming back. <laughs> and Hanuman came, Bart greeted him, and then Hanuman gave the news, and Bart was so happy that he was ready to have a celebration. It was proven that Bart remained faithful to his brother and never Slightly, even though he was acting as the king, he never really wanted the position. And then when Ram found that, and when Ram found out, they came back. When they came back, Sita was there, and she had this beautiful, beautiful necklace. It was given to her by Ram. It was a personal necklace, something she cherished. She took the necklace off. And with tears in her eyes of gratitude, she took the necklace and she handed it to Hanuman. Said, I want to give you this just to show my appreciation and my love for you for everything you've done. He's the hero of the whole Ramayana, this Hanuman. When you read that story, you'll see it was because of Hanuman, Ram was victorious. And Ram did that just to show that the glory of his devotees is greater than his own glory. In this case, Hanuman showed that. He was the one that found Sita. He was the one that led the monkey armies. And he was the one that was both, he saved the life of Lakshman. So many things he did in the battle. 
he remained loyal and to Ram through the whole time. So the life of Hanuman is really amazing. Anywhere you go in India, if there's one deity that's worshipped throughout India everywhere, it's Hanuman. <laughs> right? Anywhere, south, north, any part of India, Hanuman's there. Everyone appreciates and worships Sri Hanuman. He is the son of the Vi he is son of the wind god Vayu, but he's also the son of Lord Shiva. That's also another wonderful pastime. So this is some of the beautiful pastimes of the Ramayana. Today is a very glorious day. It's a, day, a chance to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhood who appeared in that form to teach so many valuable lessons that we can use in our devotional service. And uh, simply by reading the Ramayana or hearing the Ramayana in India or in places where there are Indian congregations, they sit for days and someone reads the whole Ramayana and they just listen. It's all in Sanskrit. They read the whole Sanskrit narrations, right? Have you done that before? Yeah. yeah. There was, uh, what was his name? Ram Bapu. He's a famous Ram orator. He goes all over India. He's old now, very old, but he still does it. He speaks Ramayan for days and days and days and gathers like thousands and thousands of people. They'll listen. The Ramayan is captivating. It is so full of amazing, amazing pastimes of the Supreme Lord. And Ramayan is not only popular in the Indian continent or within the Indian culture, but many of the other Asian countries also have copies of the Ramayan which they have under different names, and some of the characters are different. But it's there in China, it's there in Tibet, it's there in Taiwan, and many other places. The Ramayan is there as part of their, the country's literature. It's a very, very amazing story like that. So, um, I would encourage devotees, now, now that today is the last day and the day of the appearance, but still, take some time and read about Ram's pastimes. It's so wonderful. I don't know if it's, I don't think you have a copy in the local language, no? For those of you who can read English, some of you can read English, I would suggest you read. Those of you can who can hear English but don't can and can't read it may also, you know, just hear it. It's given in narrations throughout the internet. You can find narrations of the Ramayana. So very powerful. <laughs> wow, you're powerful. I have to get a bigger arrow. <laughs> okay. That was a Brahmastra. <laughs> he, he's a, he must be an incarnation of Hanuman or something. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop here because there is, there is prasadam for devotees also. But if there's any comments or questions, anybody? Do we have anything from the internet? No. Yes, Dennis. Uh -huh. Give Dennis the mi the microphone, Dennis. It's explained that um, Krishna is like Ram. Krishna is like it, Krishna and Ram are the same. Krishna and Ram. Ram, yeah. And Vishnu. Uh, Still, the the explanation is thousand names of Vishnu are the one name of Ram, and three names of Ram is one name of Krishna. Hmm. Can you uh, I don't know, explain this? They are the same, but not the same. Yeah, still, you got it. Still, uh, you, you you answered it. They're the same, but not the same. And Achintya Beta Beta Tapa, simultaneously one and different. The yeah. All of the incarnations have the full power of the Supreme Lord, but they don't use those power. 
<laughs> Each of the incarnation uses the power that they need for their particular incarnation. But Ram, he he is the highest principle of the Narayan incarnations. He's Lord Narayan himself, and he has ninety six percent of the qualities of Krishna. Yeah, so you, it's true. Well, the absolute truth is one. There's no difference between any of the forms of the Lord. They're one. But at the same time, they're different. They're varieties. So yeah, they're... So they experience, they exhibit, not experience, exhibit different potencies. Mm -hmm. Is there any other comments or questions? Yes. What is your name? Luca. Luca. Yeah. Um, I heard maybe you know one story that um, someone came to Lord Ram and he said that Lord Ram promised him to uh, fulfill hi his desire, and he said that, that he should kill Hanuman, and then uh, Lord he, Ram. He should do what? He sh he should uh, kill ha Hanuman. Who? I don't know, I heard it somewhere, but I don't know the name of this. Uh, Who should kill Hanuman? Lord Ram. Why? Because this man, because Lord Ram promised this man that he would fulfill his desire. And then um, no, Lord Ram... This is somebody's imagination. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ram loves Hanuman more than anything. Hmm. There's a story where Krishna um, Sachibama and Balaram were in Dwarka. So Krishna said to Garuda, Garuda Go to Ayodhya and tell Hanuman that Krishna wants to see him in Dwarka. So Garuda, he's very powerful. He's the carrier, Lord Vishnu. He flies. His wings are the Vedas. They actually, the sound of the Vedas are the wings of Garuda. And he came, and then uh, Hanuman was busy worshipping Ram in his deity form. So Garuda tried to get the attention of Hanuman, but Hanuman wasn't paying him any attention. He was busy worshipping Ram. So Garuda said, Come on, Hanuman, I'll take you to Dwarka. Krishna wants to see you. Hanuman just kept worshipping. Finally, Garuda kept going, and finally Hanuman got angry and took his tail and hit Garuda and knocked him all the way back to Dwarka. <laughs> he didn't have to fly. <laughs> so Garuda's there and he's thinking, you know, what, what kind of mission did you give me, you know? <laughs> and then Krishna said, all right. So Krishna transformed himself into Ram. And then he said to Satyabhama, you become Sita. And she said, no. Because if you know Satyabhama, she doesn't. She argues with Krishna all the time. That's his queen that fights with him all the time. It's good to have. If you have so many wives, it's good to have one wife that doesn't agree with you, so you can have some fun. You know, to fight. <laughs> so Satyabhama said no. So Krishna t turned to Rukmini and said, "You become Sita." And Ruk Rukmini said, "Okay." And then Balaram transformed himself into Lakshman. And then, uh, in the form of Ram, he said to Garuda, you go again and tell him that Ram is in Dwarka and he wants to see him. <laughs> so Garuda goes, he's a little careful this time. <laughs> he finally gets there and Ram and Hanuman's still worshipping. 
and he says, uh, my dear Hanuman, Ram is in Dwar... Where did Hanuman go? He's gone. <laughs> and then Garuda turned around, he was gone. So then Garuda went back to Dwarka, and there was Hanuman. <laughs> he was already there. As soon as he heard the name Ram, <laughs> he went, immediately went. So Krishna did that just to show Hanuman's loyalty to Ram. They were very, very, very intimately connected like that. So that story doesn't have any... No, whoever thought of that doesn't... No, they just created that or they heard it from a, a demon. What benediction is that? But why would you ask to kill Hanuman? <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> That's not a benediction. Maybe they didn't like Hanuman, I don't know. But everyone likes Hanuman. Hanuman is just like, he's lovable. Uh, yeah, so that, that, just forget that one. <laughs> Chuck, scratch it out. Put it in the garbage. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I have one question, Maharaj. So about these Vedic rules, I wonder, like, uh, like when women come into the contact with some men, like even when she's, ki she's kidnapped, you know, why then she cannot get married? Like, you know, she's forcefully kidnapped, forcefully come into the contact with a man, and by this, she cannot get married with someone else. Why is that? You no, know, well, that's, the, that's the Vedic culture, that uh, a man will not accept a, a woman who's been handled by another man. That's Vedic culture. Vedic culture means the daughter is always under the care of the father and she never leaves that care. The first contact she has is with her husband. The father arranges for the marriage of the daughter. To, he finds the husband for his daughter, and that's his duty. So nowadays, women are not trained in that way. So, but in Vedic culture, a, woman, a man will not accept a woman that's been with another man as his wife. Mm -hmm. That's that's culture. <laughs> Thank you. Because marriage is for life. It's not just something you do and then you get tired of it and then you think about where else can I find happiness. Marriage is sacred. Once you get married, you should fulfill your obligations up until the time when you are too old, then you can separate and go on to your next destination of worshiping the Lord exclusively. In the, for the men, the Sanyasha san Ashram, and for the woman, the Vanaprastha Ashram, like that. But a woman who, who in her youth, when she attaches herself to her, that one man, she stays with that man for her whole life. She becomes dedicated like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what she wants. That's what makes her happy. Women are not interested in so many men. They just want to find that man that will give them protection, affection, and security. That's all. Hmm? Yeah, in case of dangers. I was giving a class in Croatia. One day it was a seminar. We were in the island of Is, Is, you know, the Is Island? I is. Yeah. yeah, so I was there. And I was talking about husband and his wife relationship. And so the, the wife was sitting over there and the husband was sitting over there. 
and I'm talking. And I'm talking about this part that the husband's duty is to give protection to the wife. Mm -hmm. That's the part I'm at. As soon as I'm talking, this big giant insect, who was like a big bee or something, starts attacking this lady, who's the wife of that guy over there. So she's going, ah, oh, and I said, save her. <laughs> it was perfect for my class, you know, so I was just talking about that. So this bee came in and right on cue, just to, to, to make sure I made the point, you know. So. so he didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I finally the bee, she's scared to be away but but that's the duty of a husband is to give physical protection for a wife if she's in any kind of danger emotional protection too that's also there both emotional and physical protection Kali -yuga. well yeah Kali Yuga has got so many things that other Yugas don't have Okay, so I don't want to keep you any longer. So there's, there is prasadam tonight, and I was told it might be even special. <laughs> so thank you very much, and uh, Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, Ki Jai, Sri Ram, Nomi, Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande.